tonight on Literally Just Airplanes, we're going to be talking about a really interesting aviation maintenance topic. The topic is more on commercial jet aviation, biz jet, and some military stuff. But most importantly, we're going to be talking about Pratt & Whitney's new development of efficient gas turbine technologies using different type of materials. I can't wait to divulge into this and get ready for it, especially since I'm an airframe, and me- airframe power plant mechanic. Tune in now and we can, we can check this out. This episode, of course, is brought to you by Anchor.com and Spotify. Check out all the Spotify and podcast listeners. All you got to do is go on Spotify and check out the new local listings for my podcast. It's also brought to you by Lewis University, Aviation School, very well known. All you got to do is go to LewisUniversity.com or go to Google and type in Lewis University. Let's get involved into this episode. Let's start right now. Welcome back to Literally Just Airplanes, and of course, you heard from the intro, we're going to be talking about some interesting scientific research that has been going into airplanes and jet aviation. Uh, It's a very interesting topic, especially since a lot of science has been put into this. As you know, the airframe and power plant mechanics, they deal with science on a daily basis, so this is definitely something new uh, in our industry. Uh, So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is, of course, you know, this episode is brought to you by Lewis University and Anchor.com. Anchor now is sponsored by Spotify, so they're all in one company. Uh, You can check out my podcast and all the different types of podcast uh, listeners and publications. So let's get into this. So this is an article that I found from Aviation Maintenance Magazine. Uh, It's a great website. You can check it out anytime you want to. Uh, The website is AviationMaintenanceMagazine.com. As in A-V-I-A-T-I-O-N, MaintenanceMagazine.com. They talk about all the news and aviation maintenance around the world so first off uh like to say a a big thank you for uh letting me use this website from uh aviation maintenance magazine uh let's get into the the nitty-gritty stuff so today we're gonna be talking about pratt whitney uh developing this new state-of-the-art technology that has been used very minimally so far but it's definitely interesting because it it gets involved with my field Uh, as you guys know that i'm an airframe and power plant mechanic for flight check aviation in uh, Chicago and specifically we're working on all 747, 737, 767 aircraft and just recently we had a couple of issues with some engine vibrations you know a bunch of interior engine things starting issues all that but you know when when you think about a jet engine you think about the you know the compressor you think about the diffuser you think about the turbine blades you think about the turbine itself, you're thinking about the compressor, you're thinking about igniters, you're thinking about injectors, all that. Igniters, I should say. But what you don't think about is materials that go involved with the actual aircraft. As last week episode, we went over, you know, the Tupolev 154 with using strong turbofan engines. Now, we don't, we know for a fact that NASA has been developing some state-of-the-art type of aircraft engines that will be used definitely in the next couple uh, decades but what the interesting part is that they're creating a smaller type of material to increase 
more efficiency. Which is funny to me because jet engines right now, they're, I feel like they're getting bigger. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger for more thrust. Which is, which is funny to think because you'd think they'd be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so basically, uh, this article came out October 28th, and it's going over how they're how Pratt Whitney's going over efficiency in their gas turbines. So if this one goes over NASA developing advanced high pressure turbine technologies, as stated in the article, it says the hybrid thermally efficient core, so high tech project is part of NASA's sustainable flight national partnership, which is intended to enable breakthrough innovations and help accomplish the aviation industry's ambitious goals to significantly reduce CO2 emissions by 2050. So now when you think about this, you think about how back in the 1950s, we had turbojets that were rolling coal. When I mean rolling coal, I mean throwing hot exhaust out the back. It was definitely not helping our industry whatsoever. But, you know, you think of it today and you still think to yourself that this industry is still not really earth friendly. And I'm not an earth friendly guy. You know, I, I do like renewable energy and renewable resources, but my job more goes with making sure the airplanes fly safely and make sure the airplanes are maintained correctly. But when you think about something like this with new developing uh, projects, uh, you really don't go more into the nitty gritty unless you're in the science part. And I love the science part. I mean, for my bachelor's degree is aviation maintenance science. So I, I like going into more of the, the science aspect of it and being to know that when we work on these aircraft, we know what the materials are made of. So one of the Pratt Whitney senior executives uh, Mr. Jeff Hunt states that, you know, he's delighted to work with NASA on developing this, especially since this is the next generation, as he says, on fuel efficient and low emission aircraft. But I think the biggest thing for me is that Pratt, over the next, or the last five years, recently have been going through a lot of issues with their engines, especially the Pratt Whitney 4000s. Uh, if you guys know about the last five years, we've been going through United's 777 issue where. The, a lot of engines, even not just United, but a lot of the Pratt Whitney 4000s have been throwing compressor blades, have been throwing uh, cowlings melting, and uh, just the EEC systems not working with the aircraft. And that's been a big issue for for the 777s, especially since a lot of the 777 200s and 300s use the Pratt Whitney 4000s. Now, what I, I see what they're doing here to try to bounce them back into the game. Um, you know, GE's been doing that big time. GE's been running away with the industry recently, but I see why Pratt Whitney's trying really hard to get back into it. And that is going into this efficient gas turbine technology. So this, what this high-tech actually is, is a material. So this material is actually going into the uh, compressor area. So now what they're doing is they're putting a, as this picture says, going into a small dime size type material that will be making up the compressor area in the blades. Um, so this is not particularly going into the uh, turbine blades more of, it's going into the compressor chamber and everything behind it. So I guess it is kind of going into the turbine blades. Um, but man, it is a definitely different material. The picture really doesn't really show its justice. I would have to actually see the material and see how it, the samples, the metal samples take over time in each cycle. Um, I think this is a great idea and I can't wait to see it. But at the same time as mechanics, we have to go through training for each time. So I'll probably see this in the future. But it's more of like seeing what other mechanics and the engineers develop for this. Like what made them, I get what makes them want to make it more efficient. But you got to think of it this way. Is it going to be more efficient in the maintenance side? Is it going to cost less? Is, are the carriers going to, especially the manufacturers, are they going to put this material in? It's going to cost less. Because if you look at the GE90, for instance, it's a magnificent engine and it's been used on uh, a lot of the big cargo planes, 777 especially. And it's been, it's been very well used. It's been, it's got a great service history and it's been, have a lot of pre-models on it. Now they're up to the GENX, which is even better. So you know we see we see all this stuff going on, but we're we're still maintenance is working very strong and heavily with the AMMs, the aircraft maintenance manuals, and a bunch of other stuff to get to work with it. So well, I'm really curious to see what this this production brings to the future. Like I said, it's still new to me um, since I mean the article just came out recently and the technology itself is new. But uh, I think it's time to move up in technology. But I think it's it's definitely different. Um, 
So for all you maintainers out there that haven't really gotten their AMPs yet, or an AMP school, look forward to seeing some new technology, especially in the next couple years, and even the next, next year or so, um, with electronic jet power. But as we're, as we're going through this, this article, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to go through and we haven't got all the, the information yet, but as we look through the different sections, you know, we see that they're, they've been collaborating together and collaborations have been going on for, for decades in aviation. Um, but it looks like Pratt Whitney and NASA have, um, advanced a lot of things and especially since, you know, the low pressure fans, the low emission combustors and high performance hot sections. So they're, you know, they're trying to make the comb combustor section cooler, um, which, which is, is a great deal of things. That's why they want to put the high tech small core, which I'm, I'm assuming they use that in a lot of the, the space shuttles and stuff. But these collaborations, you know, have a vital role, especially for increasing business. And I think that's good environmentally and, and economically, especially since aviation is definitely starting to build up again uh, quickly with supersonic jets. Uh, that's going to be another interesting thing. But I think now we're trying to look for things that are economically uh, good for the jets, uh, for the actual engines. The airplanes are already up to the economically standard. You know, you look at an A350 and then you look at the 737, even the 737 MAX. Uh, you look how different they look um, compared to the regular older brothers of like the 737-800 and the 737-700, which look almost completely different than the Max 7s and the Max 8s do. I mean, even Boeing and Airbus themselves have been uh, really trying to fight fire with fire with making, you know, smaller uh, regional jets as well. But, you know, after looking at the technology points of this jet engine, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty interesting. So, yeah, so if we have any questions with that, feel free to uh, uh, comment. Um, look more into it and give me give, give me a shout out you know you, you even have to if you find me you know um look more into it and if you have any questions you know i'd love to hear it so that's really more for the, the science aspect of uh pratt whitney you know we look we look at a bunch of other stuff going on in the world right now um this technology is booming everywhere um we're also um here in on another note uh transavia airlines it's a you know it's a pretty good size airlines uh they're starting to mobilize their maintenance they're starting to make more of uh remote maintenance facilities e-mobile facilities uh when i worked at textron we had ground mobile support units that would be kind of like little satellite units that would be stationed around florida or stationed around georgia that you would uh drive a truck to one of the airports and fix the airplanes there i guess that's kind of what transavia airlines is doing and i and i like this because it's it's helping outline maintenance especially with contracting and making sure the airplanes are fixed i wouldn't say quickly but i would say in a timely manner and accurately um a lot of a lot of aviation companies are using contractors now and a lot of a lot of people of course have their drawbacks because you know you're not the same company or you're you're working differently but you know when you're thinking about mobilizing maintenance companies you're thinking about money and you're thinking about the actual amp employers you know you look at my company and there's a lot of people in there that that know what they're doing. You know, they, they want to work. And this fantastic company, you know, we get things done. But, you know, you look at some other aviation companies and they don't have enough maintenance mechanics. They don't have enough people working with you. They, It's it's all, it's a bunch of cluster. And with e-mobility that uh, Transavia is doing, I think it's fantastic. And the, f the funny thing is Trax, which I use the software... You know, they announced that today that they're adding a line control and quick turn mobility app to their maintenance environment, which I love. Um, so we should be seeing that in a, in a couple of years too in our in our industry. But uh, the airline is hopeful they will experience efficiency gains from going mobile and paperless. Uh, this now this article actually came up very recently, about a week ago, and I you know I like this. You know, we use Tracks. You know, it's a it's a database where we uh, type in our maintenance logs and we make sure that all the logs are typed in at the right time. Now, when you when you see something like this, you know you gotta you gotta tell yourself that are we going in the right direction? Of course, there's a lot of old school mechanics that use paper, and but you know you gotta look at you gotta be truthful with yourself. They're all retiring now. Uh, give it the next five to ten years, they'll they'll probably all the baby boomers will probably be all retired. So you know we're going to the next generation of aviation mechanics, and e-mobility apps are task based, and you know. They're, they're there to help the newer generations, which I really like. And I, I think Trax is a great app. Um, yeah, the problem with apps is, you know, things go down, but you got to always have paper as your side. 
you know, you can't just abandon paperwork. So with this news, uh, Transavia is, of course, a subsidiary with Air France, so KLM. And they're definitely, definitely building up their fleet. You know, they have a lot of 737s and stuff. So it'll be really interesting to see this in the next couple of decades, especially, to see where they build off of and see where a lot of other small uh, subsidiaries of big companies or even the bigger companies are going to start doing this. So I think that's very interesting as well. So, yeah, if you haven't checked out Aviation Maintenance Magazine, I think you should definitely check out their website and you can read more into these articles. I'll post this article in my podcast description so you guys can read more about it. Um, another On another news, I think this will be the last thing I'll cover today because there's a lot of articles I'd love to go through, but I'll definitely save them from other episodes. But there's this new technology that... Um, it's kind of like a um, ultrasonic detector, but it's for weld checking. So Amada is a Japanese company, I think. I think it's Japanese. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the description, but yeah. So it's either Chinese or Japanese. But what they do is they they detect resistance in welds. And I, I thought this was really cool. So I'll, I'll definitely have to show a picture of this, but this is definitely involved in commercial, military, and, and rotorcraft. I guess it will eventually be involved in BizJet, and I and I can't wait to see it in even our industry. But you know, this technology is going to be really expensive and have to go through plenty and plenty of uh, uh, calibration tests. But Amato WeldTech announced earlier this week that the new MM410A handheld resistance weld checker is ideal for both monitoring and troubleshooting issues in production. The compact unit supports a wide range of resistance welding technologies, including AC, DC inverters, AC inverters, transistors, and capacitive discharge. And it features a simple and intuitive user interface and color touch panel display. So it provides information on current voltage weld time and force. So this is a really good, this is definitely a troubleshooting tool. And you know, troubleshooting is the biggest thing that should be taught in school. And you know, I could go off on a huge tangent on why it should be taught more in AMP school, but you know, we have to learn where we go. Um... So it's basically used to correlate waveform and numeric data with process results and provide detailed weld data for process optimization and validation. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool because, you know, you see a lot of the ultrasonic uh, detectors. It's kind of like, you know, you rub the jelly on the unit and you see the, the wavelengths or the magnetic detector or you got the the eddy, eddy current detector. But this is kind of a mix with both. And the cool thing with this is it measures seam welds so you can use this on jet engines you can see where the welds are at and you can see what what's going on um you know the unit is compliant with a lot of all the other stuff on here so for measurements um it offers easy setup you know it's got a five five and a half five, even five and three quarter inch color touch panel so it's pretty big size and you know of course it monitors the ac current voltage or dc voltage for up to five minutes and it's stored on a flash drive, so it comes with a flash drive, which is really nice, so you can keep the data with you. Um, it has Ethernet connection, so you can connect to the internet. Uh, it's got con- communication. It's also got a bunch of languages, of course, because they want to use this worldwide. There's also accessories, too, which include uh, tor- Toradeal coils, force sensors, and current force sensors. So this is definitely going to be a big issue um, and a big, big tool we're going to be using in the next couple of years in aviation so I can't wait to see more weld testers brought up so now we look at the three articles that I went over today I think that out of all three of them between the science of the jet engines mobilizing the uh, Transavia Airlines you know mobilizing their maintenance the tracks and this weld tester I think all three of them really in my opinion are all very important but I, I think the one that's most important to me is seeing this new technology of jet engines, especially since I'm around them all the time. So I see, you know, the the, the general uh, GE's uh, CF6s and the CFM 56s. So those are, you know, very big workhorse engines that have been around in aviation for many years, and especially since they've been upgraded so many times to help aviation. But you know, you think about the science behind building them, and you're going to think about economically, and you're going to think about all these companies that are going to be going environmentally very soon if not already so you're you're definitely gonna be seeing that more and more throughout the years um and i can't wait to talk more about it especially because i I, i'm an airframe airframe and power plant mechanic so i've seen everything so i've seen how things work out but i think it's gonna be interesting to see how the older generation sees it when they first see it you know i mean i 
us young men and women, we're going to be seeing it out in the workforce. We're going to be like, this is really cool, but they're going to think it's terrible. Kind of like the internet, you know, if you see your grandparents, they hate the internet. And we, we love it because we grew up with it. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how things are built off of that. Other than that, um, that's really what I all want to talk about tonight. I think I'm going to be doing more of these current event things as well. Uh, of course, I'll be doing the jet jet aircraft history stuff, which I know you guys love, but I think the current event stuff is, is pretty important, especially in our industry as well, for pilots and for maintenance. So this is not just for maintenance, this is for pilots as well, but I think it's a good understanding to see what's going on with everything happening in this aviation world. Other than that, uh, there's nothing really to go off of. Uh, if you need to contact me for anything like that, uh, you can you can message me on Anchor or even Spotify. Uh, listen to my podcast. I'm not forcing you to listen to it, but it's very in- informational and educational as well. Uh, so down the line, you're going to be hearing some of this stuff, and you're going to be like, wow, I really should have listened to that podcast, or I learned a lot from it. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, or even just listen to it. That helps me out. You, you don't even have to subscribe to it. As long as you listen to my podcast and learn something, that's all that matters. Um, I, I hope everyone here has a fantastic day, and I can't wait to do more episodes. I think next week... I'm going to be going more in depth with uh, some more helicopter stuff. I think some rotorcraft stuff will be important, especially since uh, there's a new helicopter coming out and there's a new technology coming out for the helicopters. Um, that well tester that I mentioned is a big helicopter boost as well. Um, so there's going to be a ton, you know, and we're going to be seeing a lot of maintenance things that are going to be helping uh, helping us out in, in all industries. So, uh can't wait to connect with you guys then and for now uh fly safe work safe and i will see you guys later good night